soccer trainer at Liberty University. Um, and very, coaches should have that kind of discipline. And he just takes it, goes on. So many times I hate it when I see goalkeepers gesturing at their teammates and referees and the ball boys and everything else out there. They just have to do their own job. And they say that goalkeepers should be flamboyant and eccentric. And this is, this is the man here, Freddie Commodore, who may be a little bit of frustration because he's had chances today to get through and he's frustrated he hasn't converted. And a little bit of frustration there getting his much deserved yellow card. But credit to, to, to Joe Larson for a fine save and exercise of appropriate discipline afterward. Commodore is booking the first of this match officially in the 54th minute. Larson off of that restart. Again, if you're going to be cut on the face, you want it over the brow because it bleeds a lot because of the sweat, the perspiration on your forehead. But it's not a dangerous place in terms of affecting your eyesight or loss of blood. And obviously, Larson staying in this match by A-League and FIFA rules, they just simply have to have the blood stop. And if he were to have gotten blood on his jersey, he would have to change it. And there's the second booking of this match, and that, I believe, is going to be for dissent. Well, Roy Lasseter has been a volatile player, very emotional player, and it's part of what makes him great. But no need to get a card in that situation. Looking at it again, and, and a hard challenge. It actually could have been a foul on, on, on Billick coming in, and Lasseter expresses his feelings about it, and uh, it's duly noted by the referee. So Lasseter sees the second yellow card of this match for dissent in the 56th minute. No bookings. Then we see Commodore in the 54th, Lasseter in the 56th. Very, very discreet and good use of the card by the official. Not. Roland Aguilera, the Bolivian. There's Lassiter. That's where he can be a special player. This is the goal scorer. Hamisi Amani Dove loaded up the left boot. And he'll earn a corner kick out of that. That one he took a little bit too long to get off. The reason why he, he scored the goal before was he got the shot off before Andraki was set and wasn't really Andraki not able to cover the near post. But again, he had a lot of space on that goal. Didn't have so much space that time. Sean, I was very impressed, though, by your comment about the cut in that situation, showing your medical background on that. Either that or I've broadcast boxing for a while. <laughs> off the outswinger. Mahoney, and that's well saved by Andraki. Good, solid save by Billy Andraki Mahoney, who has just been tremendous on the defensive end, getting forward to contribute to the attack on the restart. This portion of the match brought to you by Virginia Beach Mariners. You see the saves there, Richard. And Drake has been called upon to make five saves, just one for Joe Larson. But Larson has done a lot of special things that aren't recorded as statistics in the beautiful game. Sometimes the best goalkeepers are the ones that have the fewest saves because they organize their defense. So the defense goes to work in front of them. They don't have to make the, the saves. And I've got to believe that an experienced player like Larson has had a lot to do with a good organization in front of him. You see Imani Dove in the 51st minute has given the Virginia Beach Mariners the 1-0 lead over Rochester Raging Rhinos now in the 58th minute. So that ball sent into the bench area over the touchline. We're going to have our first substitution of the match. Into the game for the Virginia Beach Mariners, number 22. David Stokes will come in. Coming on for Hutchison, I believe, Sean, at the right back position. This is what Virginia Beach anticipated. Hutchison did a fine job. He's a battler and had a good match. But David Stokes, uh, a guy that has great potential, someday maybe a national team candidate, going on at right back. And we get to see him get an early touch, which is a good decision by Billick once again. Stokes appearing in his second match of the four now that the Mariners have played in 2003. Just 20 years old, the defender coming into this match now, replacing Russell Hutchison. Sean, I know this player, David Stokes, very well. He's from Northern Virginia, where, where I live, and I've seen him for a long time. He played against his team in high school. He, he's a, a deceptive player. You think he's not that skillful. He's had big, long legs, but he can be very, very good, hey! even in tight spaces. Commodore, they're a bit reckless on Jeff Billick. 
He's got to be careful, already sitting on one yellow card. That's not enough to earn him his second booking in the ejection, but he does have to be a little more careful now. And this little man, Jeff Billick, you can't measure the size of the cardiac muscle. He has a big heart, and he gets around. He doesn't mind getting knocked down. He usually has one of the dirtiest uniforms on the field. Just a great team, team member. He's just always, almost always on winning teams, and that's not a coincidence. Roland Aguilera. Flicked on, no worries for the keeper, and Draki. How about Mahoney getting up in the air and challenging Fuller on that ball? He's about three or four inches shorter, coming forward out of the back. Really solid defender. Long by Ryan Denunzio. Tamox Suarez leading the attack now for the Raging Rhinos. Sedgwick pushing forward. The return to Suarez. Tenaciously marked by Billick. On the switch, Denunzio. David Hayes. Hayes. Still David Hayes. That's good looking stuff. Crossing. Absolutely no one on the back post for Rochester. Second dimension in David Hayes. He's a very good cross of the ball. He can also take people on, and he pro proved that he could do so there. Sedgwick. Suarez. Tried something clever. Fenger didn't go for it. Jakob Fenger. Sent forward by Mahoney. With the space, Aguilera lost out to Scott Schweitzer. It's a nice idea by Dante Washington. Aguilera not reading that, that play as well as he could have. Aguilera from Hayes. Monty Dove. Dante Washington, 2-0. Dante Washington was due. Had many, many chances, and this time he had set up Amani Dove with that great dummy run earlier. Andraki had no chance at that one. Amani Dove returns the favor by setting up Washington, and he is wide open on this. Wide open as Amani Dove getting in behind a very loosely organized defense. Look at the time that Washington has, and he pulls the trigger right away. Doesn't wait, and no chance for Andraki. This is very, very good finishing by the national teamer. Fourth of the campaign for Dante Washington. In the 62nd minute, putting his side up, two goals to nil over the Rochester Raging Rhinos. And is there a way back now here in Virginia Beach for Rochester? Well, they have to be dispirited now. I want to say for Dante Washington, he missed a lot of chances in the first half, but that's what goal scorers do. They don't mind. They keep playing. They get themselves together. They realize it may take eight or nine chances to produce a goal, and Washington produced one for Dove. And he, Amani Dove, and he, and he got one back from Amani Dove. He's been involved in every goal the Mariners have scored this year. Sean McDonald is happy to have Dante Washington in Virginia Beach. Last year on Fox Sports World, I called the match in Atlanta as the Mariners fell to the Silverbacks. Five goals to one as Sedgwick now booked for descent. Third booking of the match, second to Rochester. Hard to believe that this is the same Mariners side that less than a year ago fell 5-1 to Atlanta. Sean McDonald has done a beautiful job under new management, new ownership of the club of building a very attractive, free-flowing, competitive side. It's obviously early. This is just the fourth match for Virginia Beach. But the fans in this area really have to be thrilled on what they're seeing thus far. Well, they've got a product here. It's well worth watching. And Sean McDonald has de indeed done a fine job. But Mike Field, a Virginia Beach resident, has come in here and poured some money into the franchise, invested, got a, a product that's really exciting to watch, just done a fantastic job building up this Mariner franchise. It was one of the bottom teams in the league last year. This portion of the match is brought to you by USLsoccer.com. For the latest news, go online today to USLsoccer.com. Patter Curley has to be really frustrated with his team because they've had pretty good possession, but just real dramatic breakdowns in the back in the second half, and they had some in the first half as well. The loss of a couple players can really throw you off. Free kick for Rochester. Suarez trying to be clever. Right there is Joe Larson, well read by the keeper. Good positioning by Larson, and the tracking was good defensively, even though the Rhinos got ahead on that. No power, makes it an even save for Larson. 
Two other matches to tell you about tonight in the A-League in the second half. Charleston leading Charlotte one goal to nil. And in the first half, El Paso won Indiana Blast nil. For more information and news of the league, go online to uslsoccer.com. 2-0 in this match. The Virginia Beach Mariners leading the Rochester Raging Rhinos. Amici Amani Dove his first of the season in the 51st minute. 11 minutes later, Dante Washington his fourth of the campaign. Fenger. Washington tried to return for Fenger. Now does Fenger had to pull off. He was offside. Amani Dove comes in over the top of Andraki. And great work by Andraki on that one again to come out. Um, he's had a very good match. You can't fault him on either of the goals when you have players inside the box, close to the six, firing at, at close range. Washington looking for a strike partner, Roy Lassiter. Now pulls off. What a clever little back heel. Amani Dove crossing. Lassiter will track this down. Marked by Sedgwick. Jakob Fenger. Amani Dove. Rochester now looking to counter attack. For the creative midfielder Tamak Suarez. Now Scott Schweitzer. Now Kirk Wilson. Wilson into the attacking half. Suarez. Not his best move to the substitute David Hayes. Way by Richard Mahoney. Schweitzer. Miller to the byline, can't control. This will be a goal kick. Looking for the best place to play golf in town. Got a couple substitutes coming on for uh, Rochester. Jameer Miller and um, uh, Mauricio Roca, the Connecticut star. Patter Coley's going to try to interject some new life and vary the attack. Roca, a particularly skillful passer of the ball, may be able to probe the defense a little better than the Rhinos have been able to do thus far. Sedgwick. This is out to Aguilera. Lassiter. Thought he was fouled, and indeed he was. By his ex-North Carolina State teammate. We got a lot of teammates playing in this, and there's no friendship across enemy lines. Hard challenge by Schweitzer. Lassiter uh, working very hard, and we've got a substitution for Virginia Beach. This is Gary Brooks replacing Fenger at a good game down, down the left side. How about this? You play 70 minutes, Sean, and, and you take off Fenger, and you bring in maybe the fastest guy of all. Gary Brooks making his third appearance of the campaign for Virginia Beach. And a good evening on the flank for the Dane, Jakob Fenger. Amici Amani Dove loses out to Wilson. Ian Fuller. Now David Hayes. Fuller on the return. Suarez. Marked by Billick. Tamak Suarez, that's a nice ball. Through that time to Paco, who was just subbed in. Victor Paco has entered this match for Rochester. That's her Coley's first substitution. Schweitzer. Paco gives him that playmaking ability. He's not much of a defensive presence, but they don't need defense now, down 2 0 with only 22 minutes to go. Fuller opting for the long ball. Paco had the touch, then lost out. David Stokes on the switch. He is a physical presence on the back line for the Mariners. And here comes Brooks flying at that defense, covers about 40 yards, and the Rhinos have to be saying, who is this guy coming in after we've dealt with those other speedsters? Attractive free-flowing soccer tonight. As we thought, not a lot of fouls, really. We've seen three bookings, but keep in mind, two were for dissent. Sean, we've really got something here in Virginia Beach. They've got pace up front. They've got experience and savvy. The addition of Billick in the midfield just steadies the whole midfield defense. And the backline defense has been very solid. The Mariners have been very impressive. This match far from over, just in the 69th minute. And obviously, it's just the second match of the campaign for Rochester, but I think what will stand out if this does end two goals to nil for Pat Coley is that his side 
always one of the best organized in the A-League, will have conceded four match and four goals in their opening two matches. Well, Pat Arcoli has to be concerned. He's making some changes now. He's pulling off Denunzio, getting Roca in. It'll put an extra player in the midfield, probably his best passer of the ball. Roca, again, not a defensive player, but a really good passer, the ex-Connecticut star. So Victor Paco, Mauricio Rocha, both have subbed into this match. Brooks, the second substitution coming in for Virginia Beach. David Stokes was the first. Again, remember, in the A-League, you were allowed five substitutions. Cedric will have to throw in. Here's the third substitution, Jameer Miller, who does add an element of speed to the attack. Rochester looking patient, Richard. I think they might need to start playing a bit more furious. We're in the 71st minute. They're down on the road, two goals to nil against the very potent looking Virginia Beach Mariners side. And, and I agree, Sean, but Virginia Beach's defense is just well organized. They're not getting extended. And I think the key is Jeff Billick in front of the defense. He does so much work and he makes such simple, basic, sound plays that you don't get extended. And when you have players uh, like a Mahoney and 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 the busk and busky in the back experienced savvy defenders it's easier said than done to get in behind them steen camp trying to make something happen and the third substitution will now occur for virginia beach into the game for the virginia beach mariners number 15 daniel alvarez will replace his captain roy lassiter Good night up top for the former U.S. international. Roy Lasseter exit this match. Daniel Alvarez is in. I want to remind you, next week on Fox Sports World, USL continues. It's our A-League match of the week for Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's the Milwaukee Wave United face the Minnesota Thunder. That is 8 o'clock Eastern time, 7 o'clock local time in Milwaukee. Again, that's next Friday on Fox Sports World. Be sure and join me along with Steve Bell. We'll have the call for that one on Fox Sports World. And Richard, I'll see you in two weeks when we do the Richmond match. As Montreal faces the Richmond kickers. Looking forward to that one, Sean. Really, Richmond has a fine side. Had a great year last year. And Montreal, coached by one of my former players at George Mason, Bob Lilly, has just done a remarkable job as a coach uh, everywhere he's been. Schweitzer. Ian Fuller. Schweitzer on the return. Through for Mitchell. This is Mitchell crossing. The shot cleared away that time by Stokes. Well done. Rochester looking as though they're trying to walk the ball into the back of the net. They did. What a good ball by Roca. And Mitchell, I don't know what he was taking his time for. Why he passed that? Go in and shoot the ball, son. Just put it on the goal. Especially when you're down 2 0 on the road in the 73rd minute. Washington. Alvarez. Alvarez. Nisiamani Dove, he the scorer of the first goal, that in the 51st minute, Washington had the second 11 minutes later. 2-0 is our score line, now in the 73rd in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The Mariners leading the Rochester Raging Rhinos. Long service. Miller. Easily cut out that time by Steve Danbuski. I don't understand this. They play a long service into Miller. He's not going to beat him. He, he's not. He's he's a good player. He's an opportunist, but he doesn't the speed. And that thing, same play. Mitchell is jogging up to get in position. I don't think Pat or Coley put him in to jog up the opposite flank or to, or to, to fail to shoot in the box. Amani Duff from Billick, crossing. Looking for Brooks to make that run, who broke it off just at the edge of the six-yard box, and this may be 3-0. I like the substitution that Pat Arcoli has made, getting in Roca, who made a great pass, getting in, in Mitchell, who has some speed and pace. But if you don't shoot, Sean, you reduce your chance of scoring by 100%. They've got to start to take some shots. Both clubs have used three of their allotted five substitutions.